Hello everyone, this is Andrew from Crown Academy of English. Today's lesson is all about questions. So here is a statement, I like chocolate. So yes, this is a statement. And a statement gives information. A statement does not need an answer. Do you like chocolate? Now this is a question. And a question asks for something, asks you something. And of course, a question expects an answer. Let's look at the punctuation. So when we are writing statements and questions, we don't do it in the same way. Let's look at a statement. She's reading a book. She's reading a book. Statements must end with a full stop. So this is a full stop. It is a dot that we write at the end of the sentence and it's at the bottom of the letter. Okay, the bottom of the last letter. A full stop is also called a period. A question are you reading a book? And questions end with a question mark, a question mark. So this punctuation mark here is called a question mark. Okay, very important when you're writing a question. Don't forget this. Let's look at the form of a question. The general rule. So this is the form, auxiliary verb, followed by a subject, then followed by the main verb. Then these dots represent the rest of the question. And then at the end, we have the question mark. Let's look at some examples. Do you like chocolate? So we have the auxiliary verb do. You is the subject. Like is the main verb. Then we have the rest of the question. And at the end, of course, when we write it, we write the question mark. Let's look at some other examples. Were they playing in the garden? Have you seen the Harry Potter film? So here we have an example of the present perfect in the question form. And the auxiliary verb is have. Have you seen the Harry Potter film? Was she doing her homework? Okay, and of course, don't forget the question mark at the end. Now, there is an exception to the form. The exception is with the verb be. So questions with the, with the verb be as a main verb. So when we're using the verb be as a main verb in the present simple and the past simple, then um, they, it does not have an auxiliary verb. So this is the form when we use the verb be as a main verb in the present simple and the past simple. It's a much simpler form. There is no auxiliary verb here. So the present simple, we can say, am I late? Are you Mr. Jones? Is he your son? Are we ready to leave? Are they hungry? Okay, so the verb be is in red. The subject is in blue. Let's look at the past simple. Was I at that meeting? Were you angry? Was she with you? Were we in the same class? And were they at the party? Okay, so here we have the verb be and we have put it, of course, in the past simple form. Was, were, was, were, were. And the subject is in blue. Okay, and of course, in all of the examples, we write the question mark at the end. Okay, so this is an important exception. There are, let's look at the types of questions. So there are several types of questions. 
closed questions, question word questions, choice questions, and tag questions. There are other types of questions, but these are the most common types, okay, the most basic types. So let's look at each type in more detail. We'll start here, closed questions. So closed questions are also called yes, no questions. The expected answer is yes or no. So that is why we call it closed, okay? Because um, there is a limited number of possible answers. It's either yes or no. Have you washed the car? So of course the answer is either yes or no. Yes, I have washed the car or no, I haven't washed the car. Okay, we're not asking for information about the color of the car or the age of the car or the time or anything like that. We simply want to know yes or no, have you washed the car? Another example, were Jane and Mark at the party? Well, the answer is either yes or no. Yes, they were. No, they weren't. Did they leave before you? So here we have an example of the past simple. A question in the past simple. Did they leave before you? Um, yes, they did. Or no, they didn't. Okay. So there's no other real answer that is possible here. In all of them, it's either yes or no. Type two, question word questions. So we ask a question word question when we want more detailed information, okay? So here the answer is not yes or no. The answer here is open. It's an open question. And because we want the other person to give us lots of information. And the question word indicates what type of information we want. So an example, one question word, a common question word is when. And the type of information we want is regarding the time. Another one is where. And when we use where in a question, we want to know the place or location of something. So this is the form. We put the question word at the beginning of the question. So it's before the auxiliary verb. Okay, so now we have question word, auxiliary verb, subject, the main verb, the rest of the question, and a question mark. So it's getting quite long now, isn't it? But it's not it's not very complicated. We're simply adding an extra word to the beginning. So let's look at examples with these two question words. When will he call me? When will he call me? So when is the question word and we want to know time. Um, and then will he call me? Will is the auxiliary verb. Okay, so this is the future simple. He is the subject and call is the main verb. And of course, we have the question mark at the end. Where are you going? Where are you going? So we're asking for information about the place or location, the destination, his destination. Where are you going? Auxiliary verb, subject, the main verb. And the tense here is, of course, the present continuous. Okay? And, of course, we have the same exception with the verb be. So the form is always different when we use the verb be um, as a main verb. So we have the same question words, of course, when and where 
that does not change. But when the verb be is a main verb in the present simple and past simple, then this is the form. So we have the question word followed by the verb be followed by the subject. When was he in London? Okay, so we want to know information about the time. And where is he now? Where is he now? And now we want to know information about the place, his place or location. Okay, so, so notice that, that we do not have an auxiliary verb here. The verb be is not as an auxiliary verb here. The verb be is a main verb. When was he in London? Where is he now? Okay. This is the only verb in the sentence. Okay, so it's the main verb. Okay. And let's look at a few other question words because there are more question words than simply when and where. There are many, in fact. So we can have why. And this gives us information about the reason for doing something and how. This tells us information about the manner or method of doing something. And it can also give us information about the condition of something or someone. We also have what. And this gives us more general information about something. So we can say, for example, why are they walking? Okay, so what is the reason for them to be walking? Why are they walking? Question word, auxiliary verb, subject, main verb. How did you fix the car? Okay, so using what method did you fix the car? What are you doing? So asking for general information about your activity. What are you doing? Auxiliary verb, subject, main verb. So these are examples. Um, these are like the normal general rule. And now again, let's look at our famous exception with the verb be as a main verb in the present simple or the past simple. Why is he tired? Okay, so for what reason is he tired? How are you? How are you? So we're asking someone about their condition, okay? Or their, their, their health, their well-being. How are you? What, what was it? So we're asking general information about it. So here we have the verb be. Again, it's as a main verb. Here we have the present tense, the present tense, and this is the past simple. What was it? If you don't know the, um, the form of the verb be, if you don't know the present form and the past form, then I have another video that explains the form and the use of the verb be. So I'll put a link to that video in the description. Okay. Type three, choice questions. So a choice question um, gives someone a choice between possible answers. And it's not just yes or no. These are different choices. And the possible answers to the questions are usually already in the question. Okay. So this looks complicated, but it's not complicated at all. It's very simple. We have the usual, this is the normal form, auxiliary verb, subject, main verb, um, the rest of the question. And then usually at the end, we have choice one and then or, and then we have the choice two. And this is what I mean when I say the possible answers are usually already in the question. So these are the possible answers to the question. Example, do you want chicken or fish? Chicken or fish? So this is choice one and this is choice two. 
And of course, the possible answer is, well, I want chicken, please, or I want fish. So the possible answers are already in the question. My possible answer is, I want fit, I want chicken, or maybe I can say, I want fish. Okay, so choice questions. And of course, we have the same exception with the verb be as a main verb in the present simple and the past simple. So this time the form is like this. So it's the same, but without the auxiliary verb. Okay, and the order is different. We have the verb be, then the subject, choice one or choice two. Is your car red or blue? Okay, so is is the verb be. The subject here is your car. It's two words it's two words in fact. It's an object, your car. Red or blue. So these are the choices. So the answer here could be well my car is red or my car is blue. Okay, so we choose we have one of the choices in our answer. Okay? Type number four, tag questions. You like living in London, don't you? You like living in London, don't you? So this here, these two words, don't you? This is an example of a tag question. So we have a statement, comma, statement in the affirmative, and then we have a negative question, don't you? So this is a tag question. They're quite complicated. There are lots of different rules to tag questions. And so I advise you to watch my other video about this. So watch my other video for more information about tag questions. And the link is at the top of the screen now here. And I have also put the link in the description below this video. So you can either click here and watch it immediately or you can click on the link in the description and watch the video later. It's, in fact, it's a series of two videos which explains tag questions very well. There are lots of different rules and exceptions for tag questions. And they are very, very common in English as well. So I strongly advise you to watch that video. Okay, so that's the end of this video. I hope you've learned some new things. If you are interested in some private online lessons, then click here for information. And here are some other videos I recommend.